Hello, and welcome to This is Route 66. Welcome back. We're visiting with Marion Pavel all the way from Bratislava, Slovakia. Marion, how and why does a young man from Slovakia become involved with Route 66 in America? As I mentioned, uh, uh, and shortly after our border were open, I, I found a passion in, uh, in traveling. And I also I started to watch uh, documentaries about the countries in the world. And uh, that was a time when I saw, uh, when I watched, sorry, uh, for the first time, some documentaries about, uh, about Route 66. And I was really interested in from first moment i saw the uh, the pictures from uh, from the mother road and uh, i was really curious uh, and uh, the other thing is that uh, your country is totally different than europe europe is so small your country is so large uh, the distances are much uh, longer uh, than than here in europe uh, the density of uh, of population and uh, and the the nature uh, is something what is really fascinating for us uh, here in Europe. So, uh, Route sixty six documentaries uh, definitely took my attention, and uh, then uh, I was able to see to watch some some movies uh, to to be more familiar with uh, American pop culture. Uh, and, and, and American uh, style of, of, of living and, and everything what uh, Route 66 uh, brought to, to travelers in, in, in many years. So uh, the other thing was that I was fascinated by uh, a Route 66 shield because this is something what is uh, unreplaceable uh, anywhere in the world. It's it's very special and unique for Route 66. So I started to to dream about that one time I will travel to to the states and uh, uh, one of uh, of the of the things on my bucket list is to travel Route 66. Okay. And the first time you traveled Route 66, was there anything in particular that was a surprise to you? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I was really surprised uh, how large uh, your country is, uh, uh, how nature is uh, changing on the on the on the road. Uh, uh, you know that uh, when you travel in Route 66, you cross three time zones. Uh, and uh, I have to say that uh, Illinois is, uh, is uh, really similar to Europe. So uh, when we started uh, to travel on, on Route 66, we uh, rented Harley Davidsons and mm-hmm. uh, made it in a, in a style like, like bikers uh, mm-hmm. with uh, my friends and uh, my two uncles at the time. And... Uh, uh, we were really surprised how uh, the country is changing uh, in Missouri, you can uh, or Missouri, depending on which mm-hmm. part of, of Missouri or Missouri <laughs> you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you can see uh, a lot of forests. Uh, Oklahoma uh, is changing, and you can see more prairie. Uh, then uh, you can see the other other states, Texas, with a uh, uh, lot of uh, cows uh, and and grass fields. Uh, Arizona with uh, Grand Canyon uh, and then mountains and then uh, the desert uh, in uh, in California uh, with the uh, ocean at the end of, of Route 66. Uh, also, uh, we had to overcome uh, a long distances every day uh, during our trip. Uh, nothing was the same. Uh, the country uh, around us uh, was changing all the time. So we were really fascinating. Uh, the other thing is uh, what is really different uh, when you compare uh, Route 66 with uh, any other uh, sending uh, European road is that uh, uh, you are so lucky uh, that uh, Americans were able to preserve uh, uh, a 
many buildings, many gas stations, many places on Route 66, which are in the same condition like 100 years ago. This is something what uh, is not very usual in Europe. We have a very old buildings, of course. The history of Europe is much longer than, than, than American history, so it makes sense. But uh, uh, because Europe is so small uh, in years, uh, let me say last 100 years, uh, and, and as all uh, because of uh, the Second World War, everything was rebuilt. Uh, the roads were rebuilt when they were uh, extended. Uh, the buildings were rebuilt. Uh, nothing was uh, uh, preserved uh, in the same condition like many places on Route 66. This is something which is really unique. Uh, and uh, I can say that uh, during my travels around the world, uh, I, I never seen uh, the not the same, but the similar place like uh, Route 66 is. So th that was a, and it still is a, a source of uh, our fascination. So why is it important to capture and hold on to the culture of Route 66, the buildings, the road, the people? Why is that important to hold on to that? Because this is part of your history. Uh, this is something very special because uh, it's not only uh, about the history. It's, uh, it's about the culture. It's about the songs, movies, documentaries, uh, about the stories on Route 66. This is something what is really fascinating for me uh, to listen or read the stories uh, uh, from many places. Uh, I, I really love the books from, uh, from Jim Hinckley. Uh, with the bloody stories from Route 66. Also, I really love to to read uh, articles from uh, a British journalist uh, Blue Miller uh, and uh, many others. Uh, uh, I, I have a lot of books uh, uh, from historians on Route 66. So this is something what is uh, irreplaceable, uh, and uh, it's uh, maybe many people in America uh, don't realize this, that it's something really unique. And uh, I, 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 I really can say that uh, you can't find any other place in the world like Route 66. So this is what is very special on, on the Mother Road. Yeah, I think you phrased that very well. What about the people that you encounter on Route 66, the Route 66 travelers and the Route 66 merchants? How do you find those? What do you think of those these people that are on Route 66? Oh, that's uh, something what I'm fascinating also. Um, people on Route 66 are uh, also a very important part of traveling and a very important part of, uh, of uh, Route 66 as a... Uh, as a uh, more than 2000 miles long roads uh for me it's 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 really interesting to see how people can connect other people on route 66 how people are friendly uh and how fast uh you can build uh, a lifetime relationships on, on on route 66 this is something absolutely awesome for me and uh uh, I always uh, uh, explain when somebody asks me why to return back uh, to Route 66. And the main reason is I have to go back to visit all my friends there, <laughs> to meet them again, and to enjoy the time uh, all together. Um, we traveled Route 66 about uh, 10, maybe 11 times uh, wow. since... 2016 uh, in full length uh, in both uh, directions and uh, meetings with our friends are always something really extraordinary for us and this is something what we are really looking forward before every trip uh, again and uh, the COVID time uh, the, the pandemic was uh, really painful for us because for two years uh, it wasn't possible to travel because the borders were closed again uh, like in communism <laughs> for a while <laughs> and uh, we really struggled uh, for two years and and uh, we were not uh, uh, we were really 
impatient uh, to meet mm -hmm. all the clients there. So yeah, people are the main reason why to return back to meet them again and had a had the chats and 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 small talks with them, or maybe a hours long conversation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's interesting. And this has happened more than once. I'm going to say multiple times. Here's an example. I believe it's Phyllis at the Rockwood Motor Court in Springfield, Missouri, told me. She said they had two different guests, two different rooms. They happened to be from the same country, but they weren't traveling together. They didn't even know the other was there. They didn't know each other, but yet they lived a short distance from each other. And another couple was on their anniversary, you know, a long-term anniversary. We'll just say 40 years, something like that anniversary. And another couple were on their honeymoon and they too were from the same foreign country. I've heard these examples over and over about making friends from a distance where you live close together in another country. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. And, uh, what is really uh, interesting for me is that uh, it's not about the, the, the friendships between uh, Trevoros and uh, people uh, who are living uh, and serving Trevoros on Route 66, but also between Trevoros, uh, which you meet on the, on the road. Uh, so uh, during the years, we met uh, a lot of people from Italy, uh, from Israel, uh, from uh, Brazil, uh, and, and many, many other countries. And uh, with some of them, we are still in touch, still in contact uh, after, after a couple of years we met on Route 66. Mm. That's, that's really fascinating for me. Now, you've been on Route 66 many, many times. You just mentioned that. Do you have a favorite location like state or city or area that's just your personal favorite? Ooh, this is a, a really hard question for me. Um, yeah, uh, of course, I have a um, uh, couple of, uh, uh, of favorite places uh, on, on uh, Route 66. One of them is, for example, Hooker's Cut uh, in, uh, in Missouri, uh, which is a part of uh, partially abandoned uh, four-lane uh, highway in the woods and uh, for many years uh, we were happy to be there in the time without the traffic mm -hmm. which, which was which was great to see abandoned four-lane highway like in post-apocalyptic movie <laughs> without the cars without the people there uh, mm -hmm. i remember that one time uh we were able to see a deer uh, which walked across the highway there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the place where I always stop the car and uh, just spend some time there and enjoy mm -hmm. the moment. Uh, this year, I discovered uh, uh, the beach near the river uh, in Arlington. Uh, uh, also uh, in, in a misery, which is a mag magic place. Uh, if you continue on the, on the rough roads uh, uh, behind the Arlington building, uh, you will approach the, the river and you can see um, the, the bridge uh, and uh, it's really peaceful and, and quiet place there just for take rest uh, on your mm -hmm. trip on, on Route 66. Of course, uh, there is a there is a many places. Uh, I don't want to touch any other which I don't mention here. I love right. Route 66. It's mm -hmm. all, of course. Uh, also, I love uh, uh, Santa Rosa uh, and uh, Blue Hole. Uh, I love Tucum Curry. Uh, mm -hmm. I always love to spend some time in Albuquerque. That's a that's a great city. Uh, also, Santa Fe is one of my favorite places there. And uh, in a couple of past years, uh, we spent more time in uh, uh, Route 66 located near Los Angeles area. Uh, and uh, we found that it's a, a really interesting place with many hidden gems there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, right. 
On the other hand, I always, I always enjoyed time in Chicago as well. So okay. yeah, it's, it's a very hard to answer uh, mm -hmm. the complexity of Route 66 because the Route 66 is so long. I'm going to uh, go on to another question in just a minute, but when you go on Route 66, like you're anticipating that you're going to be on Route 66 soon, what is it most that you look forward to? Is it the scenery? Is it the people? Is it the, the destined driving? What do you look forward to the most? Um, I think that people are on the first place. Uh, all the meetings with them and all the conversations. Uh, I always uh, love uh, the time which we are spending with uh, Jim Hinckley in Kingman, Arizona. Uh, mm -hmm. We have some routines uh, during our visits there, uh, uh, and uh, this year uh, Jim took us uh, on a, a quite long walk uh, in the in the hills around around the Kingman, uh, and it was a really great time there. Uh, of course, uh, it's not only people, but uh, the, the traveling, especially when the weather is uh, is fine for uh, for traveling on Route 66, not so uh, hot, not so cold, something between. Uh, mm -hmm. in, let me say in September, and uh, uh, I I can say that. Uh, uh, I'm dreaming again about uh, traveling uh, Route 66 on a Harley Davidson, uh, but not uh, mm -hmm. as a as a, not, not for business, uh, uh, but again as a as a pure and simple traveler. Just okay. sit, sit on Harley and, uh, and and bite the miles by mile, mile by mile. <laughs> Yeah. You mentioned uh, Kingman, Arizona earlier, and you did some hiking or walking out in the mountains. By any chance, did you see the the wagon road where the wagon wheels had made ruts in the road from the mining? Did you happen to see that? Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, that's, that's really favorite. amazing. Yeah. That's my favorite place in, uh, in Kingman. And thanks to Jim Hinckley, which is a great host there, uh, we were... Uh, lucky to visit uh, uh, more places around around the Kingman, uh, mm -hmm. including the shooting range uh, from uh, the Second World War, uh, mm -hmm. where uh, the bombers uh, from US Army uh, were trained uh, before they uh, flew and bombed Europe, uh, including Bratislava. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a great story how the history connects the cities uh, I never know that uh, Kingman was a was a training base for uh, for pilots and bombers, uh, which were uh, uh, in our sky here in Bratislava uh, eight years ago. Before we continue, let's take a short break and play "Beat the Buzzer." Get ready! It's time to play "Beat the Buzzer." Can you guess our jigsaw puzzle? To participate, click the subscribe button below. All right, it's time to play Beat the Buzzer. Welcome back. Let's move on to our next topic. Now, you mentioned earlier the long distance, how many miles Route 66 is and the number of states it takes in. For somebody that's never traveled to America to travel Route 66, they want to travel Route 66, I'd like for you to give them a little bit of advice. If they want to travel the entire route, and they've never been here before, how long of a period of time should they allocate for their Route 66 trip? Or do you recommend that they just 
limit to one area for a different amount of time. What, what advice would you give to somebody that's never done this before? That's a great, that's a great question because uh, many people used to ask us uh, why Route 66 navigation app uh, estimates uh, that uh, uh, their trip is uh, maybe uh, about hour or two hours longer than Google Maps show them. And uh, I always try to explain that that's just machine estimation of the app and uh, Route 66 navigation just tries to estimate uh, the uh, length of your trip uh, or time for your trip uh, with the average uh, number of stops on Route 66. And the second answer is that never plan your trip based on time estimation on Route 66 because it will don't work. Uh, how much time is you travel on Route 66? May I ask you, please? <laughs> yeah. oh, well, I tell you what, I've traveled Route 66 and because I was still in a career at that time and so were my friends, we traveled as a group, we actually broke it up into four different vacations or trips and each trip that we took was a little less than two weeks. So we never traveled Chicago to LA continuously mm -hmm. in one trip. Actually, probably took us maybe four years, you know, a number of years that we each year we did another section. So me personally, if I was, from what I know, if I was to allocate time right now for a Route 66 trip, I would say at least a month. I mean, and again, for us being here, because I live in the United States, it's easier for us just to do one section at a time. So yeah. that's what worked best for us. Uh, did you know that this is usual usual way how Americans travel Route 66? Uh, uh, it's about uh, uh, the different way how uh, people from Europe, for example, uh, have a vacation time. Uh, so uh, here in Europe, we can take uh, uh, two, three, uh, four weeks of vacation uh, in a row. Uh, mm -hmm. And as I learned, Americans can't take uh, working Americans, of course, uh, mm -hmm. so, so long vacation time. So uh, that's, uh, that, that's, that's usual. Uh, depends on how, how much time people have for 66. I always recommend uh, to make uh, no more than 200 miles per day. Mm -hmm. uh, depends on what they are interested in because that's the that's another point which I try to explain. You can't see everything on Route 66. It's simply not possible uh, mm -hmm. for if you travel in two, three, four weeks. Uh, as I as I mentioned, uh, we traveled Route 66 for ten times, and still there are places uh, which we never visited before. And uh, and we're still trying to visit all right. the places in Route 66. So uh, depending on your time, uh, I recommend to travel no more than 100, uh, 150 or 200 miles per day because that's, uh, by our learning um, uh, and our experience, uh, that's uh, appropriate uh, distance uh, for daily traveling uh, to see uh, as much places as you can, spend some time there, because the other thing what I really hate uh, on uh, on traveling on Route 66 is something which we call a zoo tourism. Zoo tourism means that people just stop their car at the place, uh, pull down the window, take a picture, and yeah. uh, go, go away. Uh, they usually don't say hello to the owners. Uh, they don't uh, uh, pull up the car and, and uh, go outside and, and walk in to the building or into the business. Mm -hmm. uh, if they don't buy something, just look around, just have a chit chat, small talk with the owners. Uh, because I don't think that it's something what respects people on Route 66 when you, when you just stop the car, pull down the window, make pictures and go away. So that's something what we also try to explain people that this is not a part of traveling. The part of traveling is to stop at the place, spend uh, spend some time there, and uh, it's really achievable uh, to stop for 
if not for an hour, for a couple of minutes on each place mm-hmm. is interesting and uh, and give the give your time to the people who are giving their service and their time to Travelers 166. Uh, do you know what I mean? Oh, I do. And I should explain a little bit. My wife and I and three other couples, we travel our we travel in our classic cars. I have a 1960 Impala. Another couple has a 57 Chevy Bel Air. Another couple has a 56 Bel Air. Another couple has a 1970 Chevelle SS 454. And when we travel, there are days we may not even make 100 miles because the goal is not clicking off the miles. The goal is to enjoy the trip and to experience the trip. And for me, because I'm kind of a person, a people person, I enjoy visiting with people on the route. I mean, it could be the storekeeper, it could be the waitress, it could be other travelers. For somebody to miss all that, yeah, they were at the location, but they missed the trip. You know, they missed the experience. And to me, it's all about the experience of Route 66 not just clicking off the odometer. I mean, that's just me. But when I, just for example, next May, we're gonna be going to the fun run, which starts in Seligman, Arizona and goes to Topic, uh, Arizona. And we're allocating three days and we're probably only gonna travel, I don't know, 200 miles at the most, but we're joining in an event. And just a couple, maybe two months ago, I went out to Phoenix, and one of the things, even though it was not Route 66 related, one of the one of the things that we really wanted to do, which we did, is we stopped at Midpoint Cafe for lunch because I just love that restaurant, and then we stayed at the El Rancho Hotel in Gallup, um, New Mexico, because even if I'm on a different business trip, I'm going to take in Route 66 where I can, and. Again, it's it's about the experience of the places and the people. Don't forget to stop in uh, Vega in uh, Milburn Prize Culture Museum. That's the best museum I I, I visited ever. Uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't been there yet, and but we will. And you were just talking about a little bit ago how you just can't take it all in. And what's funny is <laughs> we've driven, and I didn't even realize it before, in Arizona, um, I didn't realize that Grand Canyon Caverns was even open. So this May, when we're going through, we're gonna make sure to stop at Grand Canyon Caverns. Never been there before. And I've been through there a number of times. It's just, like you said, you just can't do it all. So for somebody to say, oh, I'm gonna take 10 days and do Chicago to LA, I I just don't think that's a good idea. I think that uh, they can fly with a helicopter. <laughs> <in Tenza. Yeah. laughs> it's, it's not achievable with a car and yeah. see something on Route 66. Yeah. Ten days. So, yeah. so, so fast traveling. Yeah. I'd like to say thank you to our guests today. And also, I want to say thank you for watching my videos. Producing these videos is just my way of giving back to Route 66 and preserving this piece of Americana for the next generation. Now you can let me know that you appreciate these videos by just simply clicking on to this logo to subscribe to my channel. And of course, feel free to share these videos to your social media pages.